Well, that's interesting. I was curious about why I got invited. And so Mr. Davis kind of gave you a little hint. Uh, in three years, I will have spent exactly half of my life in the Democrat Party and half of my life in the Republican Party. So those of you who knew my history of I grew up as a, a, a Democrat out about 220 miles west of here. And um, so I, I never met a Republican until I was like 25 <laughs> or anybody that would admit to be one. All right. So uh, and 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 so I, I was elected three times to the Democrat Party. Uh, Senator Whitehouse, just if, 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 if I if I if, you know, there's still hope for you, brother. That's what I is what I want to tell you is it just it, we'll, we'll work. On we'll work on you. So uh, but anyway, and uh, Senator Graham, um, Thank you for being here. I'm, and and I, ain't, I ain't lying. One of my favorite senators, a guy that I've, uh, we've, I, I've been on, I've been on a lot of different, worked on a lot of different issues, and and I just want to tell you from a little personal experience, um, you know, the better place to be with Lindsey Graham is on his side. It's just just FYI. But he's doing a fabulous job, and thank you, sir, for being here and being a great patriot. And, and uh, South Carolina and Texas has a history that goes back for a long time. Saluda County was where uh, William Barrett Travis and James Butler Bonham came from. So uh, we kind of hit it off pretty good. Uh, we've been through lots of wars together and more to come. And uh, so anyway, I just want to say thanks to all of you. And thank you for coming to Texas. Uh, Senator Whitehouse in particular, you know, in all seriousness, welcome and uh, I hope you enjoy your time here and, and uh, it's for me it's always a, a, a great opportunity to get back and so see my friends and, and make new friends and, and uh, um, particularly to be Trammell, thank you brother for what you do. God bless you. You are one great man for putting this together, for doing this. Um, as all of you know, he's, he's the founder, he's the reason we're here, and, and back in uh, 2011 he founded this, and it's been some pretty darn stellar leadership, if you want to know the truth of the matter, and uh, what's grown into what we now refer to as Earth X, and it is the world's largest environmental festival. I mean, come on, one more time on that. So anyway, for everybody in this room, I, I, I think we all can join together and just say, you know, tip of the hat, thank you to him for his visionary leadership, a commitment to uh, uh, energy innovation, I mean, and, and, and how it affects our environment. As you know, the former governor of this state, I'm, I'm proud of uh, my home state. I'm proud of what we did over the course of that 14 years that I got the privilege to, uh, to lead this state because Texas led the nation in both energy production and economic growth. And I'm just as proud of its remarkable strides in protecting the environment. And for the better part of a generation, Texas has dramatically reduced its energy emissions. And it continues to lead the nation in harnessing wind power. And what's true of Texas is true for this nation. Under President Trump's leadership, our economy is expanding, jobs are growing, we're leading the world in oil and gas production, and we continue to lead in reducing energy-related carbon emissions. That's something to be proud of. Not enough people write about it, not enough people talk about it. Now, you heard me right. <laughs> we're leading the world in the reduction of emissions, carbon emissions, for nearly two decades. The United States has reduced more of those emissions than any other nation on earth. And I might add that includes every one of those 194 nations that remain signatories to the Paris Climate Agreement. <laughs> and listen, I, th 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 this is just proof, proof positive that our actions continue to speak louder than their words. When, you know, when the rest of the world get serious about taking action, I hope they'll take a look at us. And, and the fact is, we're just getting started. <laughs> we're determined to lead the drive, lead the drive for cleaner energy in this world. And we'll do it without surrendering one single fuel, one bit of growth, 
one iota of opportunity for this nation and for the world. We'll do it through the same vehicle that brought us the energy progress of the day. We'll do it by encouraging the world changing power of innovation. You know, from air travel to space flight, from curing ancient diseases to providing modern electricity. Innovation. It's innovation that has helped us achieve the impossible. And through innovation, we can make our energy even cleaner. The first step is to take energy that is free of emissions and generate more of it. <laughs> that includes renewables like solar and wind, which are now more affordable and available than ever. Now, some people want us to take renewables and just rely upon them solely. But if we follow that advice, now our energy might be cleaner, but nowhere near as reliable. You know, when the sun doesn't shine or when the wind doesn't blow, imagine what a single natural disaster or a serious cyber attack could do. Our lights could go out, stay out, impacting our way of life. Imagine the cost to our economy and society of maintaining a grid that is completely reliant upon intermittent energy. I happen to believe that we can avert this danger by adding to renewables at least one other energy source that not only is emission free but maintains rock solid 24-7 reliability and that source is nuclear energy. Yeah. From small modular reactors to advanced reactors to micro reactors. We were just talking about this sitting at the table here a little bit earlier. American-led innovation can and I think will blaze a trail for a truly amazing nuclear energy revival. Somebody might ask, well, what about fossil fuels? And the answer is clear. Again, thanks to innovation, we don't need to abandon them either. To every naysayer, let me pose this question. Rather than driving down these fuels by regulation, why not drive down their emissions through innovation? And that's exactly what we've been doing. It's thanks to innovation, we've seen astounding reductions in coal emissions like mercury through the remarkable technology of carbon capture utilization and storage. We're advancing these innovations that could one day make coal as clean as renewables. Now, that's critically important because coal has the same 24-7 reliability as nuclear. And, and to use an analogy, I view our electricity generation mix like a house with our most reliable fuels coal and nuclear, as, as they're the foundation. The house isn't stable without totally reliable fuels either. And neither is our supply of, of, of electricity. Yes, you need, uh, you need abundant sources like clean natural gas to provide us with this increased energy diversity. Yep, we need more renewable sources of wind and, and, and solar. But just as we invest in CCUS to make coal as clean as renewable, renewables, so should we continue to fund breakthroughs in energy storage that one day make renewables as reliable as coal and nuclear? That, that, I mean, that's the, that's the beauty of what we're talking about. That's the, uh, trust in American innovation is what I'm asking people to do. And, and that's true for America. And if it's true for America, it's even truer for the rest of the world. You know, for a decade, there's been this, uh, 
There's been this annual event that encourages people to shut off their lights for an hour. You know, it got me thinking about places where people have no lights to begin with. I was sharing with you all about growing up 220 or so miles west of here, that little place called Paint Creek. I remember when, well, I was about two, so I actually don't remember when REA came in 1948. But I remember seeing our house that still had a carbide plant out there by the side of it that had a little windmill, Senator, that sat there and spun during the day that the wind blew. And for a couple of hours, we had a little light. And then REA came. I kind of have that connection back to a time when people didn't have electricity. But today, there's nearly a billion people on this planet still have zero electricity. They're locked away in energy poverty. They're locked out of economic prosperity. Joining them in darkness may be a feel-good symbolic gesture, but it won't help them. It won't help any of them. But providing them with the energy that they need to produce light will. Make no mistake, if we abandon reliable fuels, we are abandoning those people as well. But the good news is this. We don't have to. We can make our energy cleaner while embracing every fuel that supplies it, if only we will keep innovating. Back in Washington, people argue endlessly on what clean or cleaner means. Does it mean carbon neutral? Does it mean carbon free? Does it mean 100% emissions free, 100% non-renewables emissions free, or does it mean something else? They fight over words, and frankly, who to blame? I see people in our national labs. I see people right here in this room forging ahead with action. It's through innovation that you all are achieving the results that we all want, and together we can transcend these divisions. We can bridge the energy poverty gap. We can secure a future of cleaner energy. And so as we look to, to tomorrow, let us spur, not spurn, innovation. Let's fund it. <laughs> Let's invest in it. Let's remove regulations that discourage it. Let's renew our resolve and revive our imagination and dream great dreams befitting our great nation and our noble cause. And as we embrace innovation, let's withhold no fuel from its transformational power as we drive towards a more abundant, secure, and a cleaner energy world. God bless you, and thank you for being here.